one of the most OG mods got updated to 1.16.5 Forge. Yes, it's not dead! Ahoy guys and welcome to Twilight Forest Full Showcase. Again, 9 pages of script, so maybe give me a like, please? Quick disclaimer, this time I won't use any shaders or optifine with this mod because it isn't compatible. <laughs> and stuff like this happens. Also because the sky and other stuff look really ugly, so no shaders for you today. I hope you still enjoy, and let's start. Basic. Firstly, excavate a whole 3x3 area, fill it with water and surround it with either mushrooms or flowers. Throw a diamond, voila, done. Welcome to Twilight Forest. Progression. This mod works with a progression system, which can be checked with the achievement menu. The unlocked progress will be mentioned for every structure after you defeated a boss. From this system, the hedge maze, hollow hills and quest grove are excluded. As well, you can disable this feature with the game rule TF and Force Progression. There will be effects for specific areas and even biomes. For areas, dungeon blocks will be impenetrable, chests locked and mobs won't take damage. Biome effects will feature wither debuffs and other damaging status effects. Common Biome Twilight Forest Covered with canopy and twilight oak trees, you can make up, by the way, them into these new blocks. You can also find fireflies sticking to trees and firefly jars. Punch fireflies to obtain them and you can stuff them into a glass bowl to get fireflies in a jar. What a surprise, right? Sometimes you can find robust twilight oak trees with cicadas. Their only use is to make sound, but you can as well combine them with a glass bowl to get a jar. You can equip them on your head, and but if you get damaged while it's on your head, it will die and turn into grey dye. Mobs found here can also be seen in different biomes, like the small passive mobs, forest squirrels, tiny birds, dwarf rabbits, bighorn sheep, wild deer that drop venison that can be cooked or breed them with wheat. Wild boars, which won't attack your back, they can be ridden like pigs with carrots on a stick, can be bred with carrots. In this specific biome, one can encounter dungeons that aren't included in the progression system, such as hedge mazes, labyrinths with some open rooms decorated with jack-o'-lanterns and filled with basic loot. Monsters you can find lurking in the dark are hostile wolves, swarm spiders, hedge spiders. Break these spawners as they cannot be deactivated with torches. Forest ravens are one of the most important mobs spawning next to these obsidian monoliths as they can drop raven feathers which are used to make magic maps. But you will also need glowstone dust and torchberries, a new plant underground. It can also be used to get torches. Those will show you structures as well biomes interesting to explore. One of the first ones could be the hollow hills. These can be found in small, medium or larger variants. Now to the details. Small hills will grant you with coal, iron, redstone, glowstone. One can find in their loot rally next to basic items ore magnets, diamonds or steel leaves. Ore magnets work like lottery. Look at a wall or the ground and with some luck it will pull valuable ores to you. Doesn't work on coal but it can reveal whole veins or even modded ores. You can apply unbreaking or mending on it. Steel leaves are valuable resources you should look out for. One can craft a whole equipment set out of it, which comes even enchanted, like the sword with looting or the boots with feather falling. It can only be found as loot. Even the blocks made out of it reduces 25% of fall damage. In small hills you will probably meet new challengers. The early known swarm spiders, but as well the red cap goblins. These laughing small men will try to blow you up with TNT. The other new mob are cobbles, but these can be found anywhere where it's dark enough for them to spawn. The drops are wheat and gold nuggets, but interesting is if you enter an area that is locked, a cobbled with a signed book will appear. Upon death, he will drop it, giving you a hint where you have to go next. The next ones are the medium hills. Up to six loot chests players can find here containing iron wood ingots, transformation powder, but as well rarely moon worm, queen, peacock, feather fan and uncrafting table. Iron wood equipment is again enchanted but not that advanced as this material can be crafted. Or just find within roots, live roots, break them and combine it with gold nuggets and one iron and you will be granted with two iron wood ingots. Transformation powder is a really handy item that lets you transform mobs to the overworld or the twilight version. Here you can see the whole list of transformations. The moon worm queen holds 256 moon worm larvae inside of her. 
Sounds disgusting, right? But it's actually quite cute. Right click to place them or hold to shoot them. They will emit light, but like fireflies, don't have any other purpose. If you equip them in your helmet slot and get damaged, they will turn into lime dye. The queen can be rejuvenated when empty by feeding her three clusters of torch berries. The peacock feather fan is a tactical item when you are getting sandwiched. This can boost enemies away with the right click, but you can as well tactical long jump with it. Right now, this won't give you any sort of full damage, but it should. As well, it can be used as a booster for Elytras. The uncrafting table can also be crafted, but this needs an item which is currently locked by progression. But this table is still a crafting table, if the input slot is empty. As soon as you put one in it, you will unlock the three new modes, repairing, uncrafting and recrafting. This currently doesn't work properly in the 1.16.5 version. The footage you see here is from the 1.12.2 version. If you put an item into the left slot, you can uncraft it in exchange of some experience. Use the switch to scroll through different uncrafting recipes that contain e.g. different planks. Repairing activates if you add a damaged item into the left slot. It will show up what kind of material is needed, place it in the red slot and voila, it's repaired. Recrafting works for both damaged and undamaged. This allows you to recraft an existing item by replacing ingredients. The best feature about this, it will even transfer enchants that were on the previous tool or equipment. Very handy, to be honest. Now back to the medium hollow hills. The last aspect are the new mobs you can encounter there. Introducing now, say welcome to fire beetles and red cap sappers. Fire beetles are tiny fire dragons entrapped in a beetle. They can breathe fire on you, so rather keep your distance. Red cap sappers are the more improved DNA of the red cap goblins. These ones have more than only one TNT, so watch out or they will blow you into the end. Lastly, large hills. With an astounding interior volume of 175,000 blocks, you will hit probably the jackpot in these large caverns. Up to 12 treasure chests containing valuables such as naga scales and steel leaf. Naga scales can be crafted into armor, which will be again enchanted due to its magical properties. Your new bullies here are wraths, witches, slime beetles and pinch beetles. Wraths are ghostly kings, slime beetles will fire slimy balls at you with high damage. These retreat when you come too near them, so again usable. Pinch beetles are the most frightening in the hollow hills, charging at you to grab you, just then to hoist you in the air. They are very fast and really dangerous next to lava or cliffs. Naga courtyards. These hedge-filled yards will contain the first boss new adventurers have to slay. The Naga. It's surrounded by walls and Naga stone, or variants you can see here. As there's no entrance, one has to either break in or climb over the defending walls. In the middle of this structure, players will encounter the Naga, a snake-like boss that will rampage through the hedges and even the walls. But if you flee out of the area surrounded by them, the Naga won't attack you anymore and return to its home. If the player successfully defeats the Naga, he will be granted with its scale, allowing the magical barrier from Lich Towers to disappear. The second item it drops is the trophy resembling its head. Lich Towers. This castle-like boss mansion is filled with loot and hordes of mobs. There are many extra rooms on the sides where explorers can find precious blocks or items such as enchanting tables, books or brewing stands. Mobs that will try to hinder you from entering the top floor where Mr. Lich is waiting for you are zombies, skeletons, swarm spiders and the new mob death tomes. It is advised to not rush into conquering this structure as it's filled with hordes of monsters. At the floors of the middle tower you will find a staircase which you firstly have to conquer to go from one floor to another. Watch out for gaps so you don't fall to your death. On the top floor the lich is waiting for you. It has three phases. The first one it will be called duplicating. He and his both shadows are immune to attacks from the players due to the shields around them. The strategy here is to reflect the ender pearls they are shooting like ghast fireballs. Each refracted hit will destroy one shield. After all shields were demolished, phase 2 begins. During this one, Lich will use its zombie summoning scepter, using to summon loyal zombies that will try to distract you from the king. Now you are able to melee attack him. 
When the scepter runs out, the lich will start to attack you with his golden sword, going on swords of rampages. Upon death, he can drop one of his four scepters. The scepter of twilight shoots projectiles when right-clicked. Recharge with ender pulse. Scepter of life drain will drain the life of whatever mob you when holding right-click. Recharge with a fermented spider eye. The zombie scepter you will be able to have your very own loyal zombie horde, but these will vanish after one minute. Recharge it with rotten flesh and potion of strength. The fourth scepter of fortification creating five shields around you, they will break if you receive damage, but as well vanish over time. Recharge with golden apples. You will again get the trophy of the slain boss. After the lich dies, you will gain access to swamp, dark forest and the snowy forest. Similar to these biomes is the dense twilight forest, commonly you can find giant oak trees there, as well as hollow hills and naga courtyards. The firefly forest is a lit up place with a ton of fireflies and firefly jars. Here you can find hollow hills, hedge mazes, naga and or even the lich towers. The twilight clearing are similar to plains, but occasionally decorated with giant oak trees. Here hollow hills are more frequent, but rarely you can also find lich towers or nagas. Mushroom forests are a mixture between the old mushroom forest and the twilight forest. One can encounter all four special structures of the twilight forest. The oak savanna. The biome without any canopy trees, but giant oak trees, all four structures can be found here. Lastly, a good transition twilight streams, forming natural borders between different biomes. Now to the next biome, the swamp variants. Swamp. In this biome, one will encounter mangrove trees, a new tree type, and sometimes giant oak trees. If you enter this area without defeating the lich, you will be inflicted with a swarm of mosquitoes making you hungry. Within this biome you can find a structure that looks similar to a hollow hill but has an entrance on top. This here are the labyrinths. New loot and new hostile companions are waiting there for you. Also, introduced monsters that are home to the labyrinths are slime, fire and pinch beetles. Sometimes as well cave spiders. The new mob you will be introduced to firstly is the Minotaur. These entities will sometimes be equipped with golden axes or golden miniature axes, charging at you with full speed. If you happen to get the rare golden miniature axe, you will be granted with a weapon that does more damage if you sprint towards your enemy. These creatures can also drop maze map focuses, but it can also be found in chests throughout the labyrinth. This is the item that you can use to make the uncrafting table. With it, you are able to craft the maze map, to see all rooms where you've been and what you still have to discover. If you combine it with a block of gold, iron and diamond, you get a maze or map that will even display ores around you. And the other new opponents are maze slimes. Grey colored, they could easily squish you in the thin corridors of the maze. They can drop next to slime balls, also charms of keeping, which can even be crafted into higher levels. Bronze will only keep your selected item or offhand item and armor. Silver armor and hotbar, gold the entire inventory. Don't log out when you die while having the charm in your inventory, this will delete your saved items. There are certain basic loot rooms you can find, chests behind iron bars, but watch out as sometimes there will be a trip wire blowing you up into the nether. Then the hidden vault, which can only be seen with a maze map. Don't activate the pressure plate as there's TNT under it. Or by breaking the block above it, because um, there's sand and it falls on the pressure plate and then your loot goes whoosh! Common loot which you can find here is iron wood ingots and steel leaves, as well as their armor, maze map focuses, but sometimes a maze breaker in the secret vault. This one can mine through all blocks of the maze and only losing one durability, while other pickaxes will lose 16 when mining maze blocks. Now to the boss. The labyrinth consists of two floors. In the second one you can encounter the minish room and caged in a room in every corner a chest. The minish room's attacks are charging at you or charge up a melee attack. His drops are the trophy of his head, his diamond miniature axe which has way more durability than the golden one, and his delicious meat which you need to eat to unlock the new area, the fire swamp. Within this biome, one can find the Hydra in its lair. How to defeat it is by shooting with a bow whenever it opens its mouth. That can be quite hard at times, but you will get the hang of it. It will slowly regrow more heads. Its attacks are fire breath, 
explosive bombs and if you get too near it, it will even bite you. Upon death it will drop chops, a new food source grants regen, fiery blood can be made into a pick, sword and a new armor set. Armor and sword burns target, the pick should auto smelt. Also don't forget its head. After it's slain, you successfully killed the first boss for the Highlands biome, but you still need two more. Dark Forest. This is a biome where nightmares are born. Thick leaves let no light through, creating a sanctuary for all sorts of monsters. King spiders with skeleton druids on the back lurk behind every corner. The massive spiders are scary, but the challenge here is that the skeletons will shoot poisonous seeds at you while the spider is quite fast. This can be a deadly trap. The other new animal is the mist wolf. They can inflict blindness if they attack in the dark. Within this darkness, one can find a somehow broken structure made out of bricks and under bricks. If you go through this, you can find the entrance to the goblin knight's stronghold. I will be using night vision so you can see stuff, but without it, it would look like this. The entrance is immune to all sorts of damage, but you can maybe already spot the pedestal in the corner. On this, one can place any sort of trophy it got after slaying one of the now named bosses, Naga, Lich, Mingshroom, Hydra. This stronghold is a bit different than the others. It's way more massive, containing three floors, and to be honest, you can use the maze map, but you will need a ton of them. Firstly, what new mobs can you find here? Other than creepers, you will encounter helmet crabs. Not that big of a problem if they don't swarm attack you. They drop armor shards, convert them into armor shard clusters, to then be able to get a night metal ingot. A new resource made into a ton of new equipment, so let's start. The whole set is quite similar to diamond as comparison. The sword will deal more damage against armored enemies, the loop is used for the block and chain, and the shield. I really like this weapon, to be honest. Able to break blocks, dealing 10 hearts of damage as well can disable shields, like axes. The axe and pick can be used as a weapon, but it will lose durability much faster, effective against armored enemies. The block made out of this resource is like a metal cactus, as it destroys items and is way stronger. The other two mobs are the block and chain goblin. This one can knock you into the air, and so maybe keep your distance. Drops armor shards as well. And the goblin knight. This one, actually two enemies. The upper part has to be killed first. As you may have noticed, you cannot deal damage from the front, you need to wait until he wants to strike, where he will be stuck for a bit, and then shoot him or hit him in the back. The upper part has the helmet and the weapon, so he's stronger. After he's dead, you just have to kill his brother. Potential loot can be found in these single chests. In this big treasure room that's blocked by a spawner room in front of it. The lava room with ores. Also, this room. Don't ignore it, just remove the upper block. Underneath it, there's a chest. More common you can find here nine metal ingots or armor and as well charms of keeping. But even the other one, new for us, variants of charms of life. If you are carrying a charm of life, you are basically equipped with a totem of undying. It can be upgraded to level 2. The first level heals you up to 4 hearts and grants regen for a few seconds. Tier 2 heals you fully, grants regen, resistance and fire resistance for 30 seconds. To end this chapter, you will find in the third layer of the Goblin Knight's stronghold, Phantom Kings barricaded in a room. In total 6 night phantoms, a good strategy is to defeat one and then back away out of the room to regen as they won't hunt you down if you go out of there. Be careful as you can get sandwiched at the start. They have two attacks, merely hitting you and when changing to the ghostly form, they can use three different attacks depending on what tool they have. If a pick, they will spam. If a sword, they will come for you dealing massive damage. If an axe, they will throw it at you, dealing quite a good amount of damage. They can receive damage from any form, but are more vulnerable when in their ghostly form. Upon the slaughter of every one of them, a chest will appear with Phantom Knight's armor. Equipment that won't be lost upon death and cannot be enchanted with curses. Common loot and the trophy. With this, you unlock the Dark Tower in the center of the Dark Forest. This is the more dangerous variant of the Dark Forest. In the center, the color changes to a pale yellow, probably because of the influence of the Dark Tower, where the 
Urugast is waiting for you. The monsters that spawn here are the same, so let's start with the structure. The entrance consists of tower blocks and reappearing blocks. When right-click, they will vanish for a few seconds, allowing you to create very awesome looking doors. At the bottom of the tower, you will have to go through a maze with reappearing doors. One can find double chests filled with useful items. Throughout the tower, you will find as well the anti-builder, a block that hinders you from breaking blocks or placing them. At least, you can break it with an axe or else, I don't know. Another useful block is the builder, in the builder chambers. When activated, it will build blocks the way the player is facing. Lastly, there's also the vanishing block that will vanish after you interacted with them. The new enemies you have to deal with next to the boss and the already known pinch beetle are firstly the small Caramonite Ghastlings. A smaller variant of our ghast, meaning they can sneak up to you. Carmenite golems but bad golems drop iron and tower wood planks. Carmenite brutling stronger swarm a spider. Beware of groups. The tower wood borer, they hide in infested tower wood, so basically stronger silverfish. You can create with their essence, redstone and a gas tier, Carmenite. With it, you are able to make a, the block itself. The a builder, reactor, repairing or vanishing blocks. Lastly, outside of the tower, gas guards will peek through holes in the structure to spot any intruders. To be able to get to the middle tower, you have to explore the smaller ones around it and you will find four tower keys. This is probably one of the longest dungeons as you are forced to explore the other rooms to gain keys to unlock the door to the middle room. Then you have to go through the challenges and again tower exploring, yes. The, in the middle room there are two main challenges, the fence maze for which you need an efficiency axe as anti-builders will rebuild everything you are trying to destroy. The tactic here is to destroy the block, walk, destroy, anti-builder, repeat. To get out of the maze you need to sacrifice some health as you will embark through the blocks as there is an anti-builder waiting outside the maze. The other challenge is filled with ghastlings and a big parkour. After a few floors, you will then find the reactor room with the Carmenite reactor. Don't activate it, though. It will seemingly transform obsidian and netherrack into gold and diamond, which are fake. Then explode and voila, here have also some small Carmenite ghastlings to deal with. Here you can as well find Bora essence. Now to the boss fight. Take your Orgasts. The Orgast spawns at the top of the tower, which lead to four extra rooms. The attacks by the Orgast are three fireballs at once, summoning his ghostlings or tantrum mode. This happens after reaching half and quarter of his health. He won't shoot fireballs, but continue to summon minions, changing the weather to rain and crying, which if you stand under it, it will hurt you. Either you can reflect his fireballs, attack with a bow, or use the four rooms. How? In them, you are able to locate gas traps. Kill nearby gas links to power it up. If it has enough power, it will start playing loudly. Wait until the Orogast is nearby and activate the pressure plate. It will kill all nearby ghostlings and guards, as will deal critical damage to the Orogast. Upon death, you will be granted with Carmenite, his trophy and fiery tears. With them, you can as well make the fiery equipment. The Orogast is the second boss out of three, which are needed to unlock the High Lands. Cold Biomes The snowy forest sticks out with its unnaturally cold environment. No new trees, but you can encounter the winter wolf. They drop arctic fur, it can be used to make a block which reduces fall damage by 90%, as well as the arctic clothing. Similar to iron armor, the chest plate is stronger though, but you can even dye it. Within this biome one can as well find the yeti lair, where yetis are now in two meet and large meetings. Yetis don't hurt you, but they will pick you up, throw you down, and that hurts. So maybe equip a feather falling boots. Another interesting fact is they won't be aggressive if not provoked, or if you don't respect their privacy, then they will get mad. Yetis don't like cuddling. They drop as well arctic fur. Now to the boss. In this layer, you will meet yetis as well as alpha yetis, a gigantic leader of its breed. His attacks are firstly throwing ice blocks at you, which will inflict freezing around them. If you stand too close, you will be thrown like a normal yeti would do. Sometimes it will change to its second attack, where he jumps around, flapping with his arms, dealing knockback. Also, ice spikes will fall from the ceiling, so watch out. 
I recommend using block and chains or a bow. Upon death, you will be granted with the Alpha Yeti fur and ice bombs. The fur can be used to make an epic looking suit that will inflict frosted. It also comes already enchanted. Ice bombs cover a 7x7 area with snow, turn lava to obsidian and water to ice. All entities in its range will be inflicted with Frosted 3. His death unlocks the Glacier with the Snow Queen, so let's go! Glacier. This biome is easy to spot through the snowy forest, as the glaciers are even taller than the trees that are home to the forest. On top, you will encounter a world frozen in ice and penguins, and passive mobs that will drop feathers, can be bred with raw fish. Here you will also spot the new boss structure, the Aurora Palace, made out of Aurora blocks that changed their appearance over time. The challenge with this structure is probably to navigate through it, having to put up with the chance of missing some loot, as it can be confusing sometimes to get to the last floor. But firstly, what new mobs can you find here? The Stable Ice Core. These should knock you back to your first ever dirt base, but I think in this version it's broken. Watch out for these when you are not on stable ground, or you will find yourself spluttered across the glacier. But don't worry, they even have a more annoying brother, the unstable ice core. When they are near you or upon taking a lethal damage, they will start to expand and then explode, turning blocks around it into terracotta or glass, but sometimes even exploding a few blocks, leaving deadly gaps behind. Lastly, the Snow Guardians, which love to change their outfits. You can find them in various variants. They can drop their armor or tools. Loot can be found in various dead-end towers, but at least treasure, right? Next to Ironwood, Steel Leaf, Charms of Keeping, one can find the probably really valuable glass sword. It hits with 40 and attack damage, but you can only use it once. Well, you can still enchant it with Unbreaking to use it more than once. If you're lucky enough to not get lost, you will eventually find the Snow Queen Sanctum. A room filled with ice stairs and floors, and on top you will encounter the new boss, Snow Queen. Her attacks are divided into three modes. First mode, she's hovering with her ice thrown above you, summoning loyal ice crystals that should hunt you down. When she gets angry, she will start to slam her ice blocks downwards with the hope of hitting you. This destroys the blocks and floors, making it more and more difficult to move around. Lastly, when she's real mad, she will go on eye level with you and start using her ice magic dealing frost. I personally use the Yeti armor, as it comes with a feather falling and I think it, it really helped me out. The only challenge here is that she is protected by her ice throne, meaning you can only hit her upper part. Sometimes this makes the battle quite long. Upon death, she will drop either the Tree Bow or the Seeker Bow and the Trophy. The Tree Bow is one of my favorite weapons. Shooting three arrows at once, only using one though. This allows you to multiple hit targets. The Seeker Bow would probably be the bow I'd use in a hardcore world, as my aiming is, um, uh, yeah, not so good. With this, you literally have an aim hack installed. Of course, sometimes it can fail, but it's still awesome. With the defeat of the Snow Queen, you have successfully killed all three bosses, Hydra, Snow Queen and Orogast, to unlock the Highlands. Highland Biomes Highlands are quite similar to the giant tree tiger biome of the overworld. Underground brave adventurers can find massive, awe-inspiring troll caves. Most of the times you can find wide entrances with troll stein, blocks that are lit up enough to so no normal mobs can spawn. Before we get into the loot, let me introduce you to your new toxic friends. To be honest, next to the normal mobs, you can just encounter trolls with their villager noses. They rarely drop magic beans. If slain next to troll bears, they can ripe, starting to emit light. To really get all treasures found in these caves, one firstly has to acquire magic beans, either by killing trolls or by stealing them from small vaults, as well as uberous soil. Before coming back to the caves, one has to conquer the cloud cottages, and for that you can use the handy magic beans. This soil can also be used to grow any sort of plant or food within a second. After it was used, it will vanish though. To get more of it, bone meal it. After now acquiring magic beans, find one of the recognizable big spots of soil. It indicates that cloud cottages are above it. Planting these beans here will result into a huge beanstalk, allowing you to climb up to the sky village. 
On top, here you will find giants, miners and armored guards. You will need to kill the miner to get its giant pick to progress further. But if you are already there, why not kill as well the guard? Beware, this one has more health and deals out more damage than the miner, but drops its giant sword. My tactic was just camping inside the cloud and killing them with a block and chain. Because giants keep spawning as long as the cloud is intact. So don't get sandwiched. The pickaxe is able to mine giant blocks, which are 64 blocks in one. You can craft it out of giant cobble and wood, but first you need to get it, thus again having to travel to the cloud cottage. The sword does 12 damage, the pick 10. After acquiring the giant pickaxe, travel back to the troll caves and find the giant vault. Even if you have the giant pick, it will take a long time to break the obsidian, but after some minutes, you should be able to get inside of the vault, where there's two double chests waiting for you. But the real treasure you are looking for is the Lamp of Cinders, allowing you to get to the next biome, the Thornlands. Thornlands! Firstly, how does the Lamp of Cinders work? Either right-click blocks to turn them or hold right-click to charge it and burn an entire area. The dream of every pyromaniac. Why you need this in the land of thorns? Well, try to break one thorn and you see, it just goes further. So just burn them and you are even able to walk through them. Sometimes you can see thorn roses, decorative plants. The ground is made out of decked rock, hard as diamond, this will take ages to break. The only reason you want to get to this biome is to get through and to the final plateau. Final plateau. Like with ice and fire, the final boss is not added yet. The final boss fight, also called Experiment 115, will take place in this white castle. Here you can see all of the blocks in the final castle features and the special doors. In the middle of this structure you see an area boarded up with fences. If you are curious about the final boss, join the Discord server for upcoming sneak peeks. The three new mobs spawning here are Arbiter Cube and Adherent and another cube. The ghost acts like the druid skeletons, the cube doesn't care, as well as the other one. If you happen to break through the fences, a kobold with 512 health points will spawn. If you kill him, you will achieve nothing. Rarer biomes. If you spot mycelium patches, you enter the deep mushroom forest. Even though there's no magical protection of it, one can find ruins of the mushroom castle. What there will spawn is still unknown, but it's really exciting. Another rare biome is the Twilight Forest Lake, nothing special. Lastly, welcome to probably one of the most beautiful and eye-catching biomes, the Enchanted Forest. The first aspect that probably caught your eye were the rainbow trees. It consists out of oak wood, so no new blocks. But within this magical place that does not surprisingly have a magic barrier over it, you can find the Quest Cove with the Quest Ram. If you look closely enough, you will find one dispenser with colored wool. Why? That's exactly the quest the Ram wants you to complete, gifting him all 16 wool colors. Feed him the wool with right clicking. After you are done, you will be rewarded with tons of valuable vanilla ores, blocks like iron, gold, diamond or even emerald. As well, you will be granted with its trophy, even though he doesn't die, and the crumble horn. The horn changes some blocks into the correct version or destroys them. Either right-click it to use it once or hold it to imitate a whole sheep horde. Here's a list of all block effects. Landmarks! As you may have noticed, you can find some smaller structures in nearly every biome. They are called landmarks and aren't implemented into the progression system. These are the stone circle, the well sometimes 2x2 two two or 1x1, one one. in smaller variants one can rarely find loot, the foundation sometimes one can find loot as well if you are lucky enough to locate the cellar, and druid huts are home to druid skeletons, use a bow or they will corner you. Sometimes these huts don't look like they provide you with anything, even though there are hidden trapdoors underneath the rubbish or a spawner. The picture cellar, the bloody cellar, the big storage. Watch out as these sometimes contain deadly traps. Obsidian monoliths tend to have a lot of ravens around them, so look out for these pillars if you are in need of some raven feathers. A plus, you also get a lapis lazuli block. Slagmites managed to break out of caves or hollow hills sometimes contain valuable ores. As I said at the beginning, big oak trees grow within the twilight forest. If you break the first layer, you are able to travel to the top as vines grow inside of it. Why would you? Sometimes you can hear a hissing from one of the bigger leaves, indicating that there's a hidden dungeon. Filled with swarm spiders, brave explorers can find in their chests magical saplings. 
In total, there are four different ones. Choose wisely where you want to plant them as they cannot be relocated and the core will always shatter. Activate the trees by right-clicking on the core, grey for disabled, colorful for on. The first sapling is the tree of time. It will speed up the growth of plants around it. The tree of transformation will turn slowly, really slowly, the color of the biome into wild colors similar to the enchanted forest. The miner's tree will pull ores in a 32 block radius towards it. The sorted tree will just assault chests like you can see here. Sometimes you will find remains of the quest grove, nothing interesting about it. And even big oak trees will die someday, leaving behind stumps and hollow logs. Lastly, graveyards in a spooky forest. This biome is orange colored and filled with jack-o'-lanterns. Sometimes you will find graveyards, but in my opinion these aren't finished yet, as you can see structure blocks and even loot that isn't fully implemented yet. Rest of the mod, now we will just talk about features we haven't came across yet. So the showcase is complete. These items you can see here cannot be explained as they aren't implemented yet. Maze wafers are a new food source in labyrinths and the Aurora place. An experiment 115 found in the Dark Tower. If you place 8 at once and add a bit of redstone on it, it will slowly regenerate after you ate from it. It will as well emit a redstone signal depending how much is left of it. It cannot be moved though. The Ice Bow can be found in the Aurora Palace. It inflicts Frosted 3 for 10 seconds. The Inner Bow is a tactical bow as well found in the Aurora Palace. With this one you switch places with the monster or entity you hit with an arrow allowing you to teleport out of dangerous situations if you spot a mob that's alone or on a higher position. Lastly, the Ice Sword again in the Aurora Palace. Inflicts like the bow for 3 for 10 seconds. Low durability, but repair it with packed ice. Stronger than diamond. You can as well make iron ladders, by the way, just informing. To finish this off, the Smoker and Fire Jets are two new blocks in this fire swamp. The smoker just smokes, but the fire jet will consume lava underneath it to blast the fire flame to the surface. So watch out if you want to harvest that, as there will be lava under it. You can encase both, so it will work with the redstone. The encased smoker again just for smoke, but the fire jet can be used to kill enemies, thus using it for mob farms or protection. Okay, so here we have another big video done. I just want to take now time and just say how grateful I am that we literally hit 10k subs. This We doubled the amount of subscribers I had on my old channel that I deleted. I I'm really glad that you like my videos, that you enjoyed them. I hope you enjoyed today's too, so <laughs> tell me if you like Twilight Forest as much as I do, because it's one of the most OG mods out there. I hope you liked it, and now I would say we'll see us in the next video. Ciao!